Hey everybody, welcome back. Another edition live at Drew's house from the beautiful studios in Newburyport. Hope everybody is doing well, feeling like spring a little bit these days. It's kind of like every day you wake up though and have to test it, like jackets still around, all that stuff. I have been in sandals too though, so you know, I'm kind of jumping towards spring. Uh, return guest, it has been a little while since I have seen you in person. Kyle Hodgson, Newburyport Athletic Director. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, thanks. It's great to be back here and not, uh, yeah. not doing it virtually with you. I know, I loved inviting you into my kitchen too. Thanks for doing that all those times, keeping people up to date on the sports and the athletics and uh what a weird two years that was doing all that huh it's it was uh we, we <laughs> thought it was ending and it never seemed to end and uh yeah. we, we really feel like we're we've moved on now so we're looking forward to the spring season absolutely well all right we'll talk about all the moving on i do want to just have you how would you recap what it's been like to be an athletic director we've talked about it a little bit in my kitchen but just when you look back on the last two years uh chaos learning experience how would you best describe it yeah um I really don't know how to describe it, uh, but it was learning to be more flexible. You know, coaches and athletic directors, we're, we usually plan two seasons ahead, and we don't like change or deviating yeah. from what we're doing. Uh, and during COVID, it was daily changes, changes during the day, changes during games at times. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we just learned to control what we can control and, and go with it. And uh we ended up uh, we ended up surviving, and I think that we can mesh some of those things that we learned, maybe, yeah, um, with how we operate and make a better pro uh, program. Is it was there some stuff you're actually going to carry over that you actually liked? Well, I you know I'm going to Franklin Mass on Friday for an in-person meeting. I was hoping that would be virtual, so that yeah. that kind of didn't carry over, but. Um, some things that we've done virtually with coaches and parents and, and things. Okay, cool. So the uh, so it must be great, though, here just on the other side. We're talking spring sports now. I know the winter season was successful. I know you, you maybe you can want to recap that a little bit too for us if you want, but it's a great time of year, isn't it, getting ready for spring sports and just jumping into a whole new uh, weather's getting nice, and now it kind of feels like we're coming out of this thing. Absolutely, and, you know, we really turned the corner when we came back from February vacation. Yeah. Uh, with no masks. Yeah. And to be able to see faces again, I, like I've, I've only seen from the, basically their eyes for the last two years. And the freshmen and sophomores, I've never seen their faces. And they've never seen my face. You're so, like not joking about that either. Yeah. Literally never seen their faces. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, maybe in the lunchroom, but that's uh, just for a brief amount of time. Yeah. But never to interact with someone. So when we came back after February vacation, it was, it was like the first day of school you know, and um, it was a noticeable upbeat, um, you know, yeah. in, in, the, in everybody and interacting. You could see smiles instead of just trying to read eyes. So really that, I didn't realize what an impact that would have. Yeah. Um, but that kind of gave hope. And it was like, okay, let's go. Let's, yeah. And we played our um, playoff season for the winter with no masks. Um, yeah, because the MIA eventually said it was... Uh, they'd made that rule correct. Yeah. yeah, I mean our basketball team, our hockey team, track we're, we're wearing masks yeah. in February. Um, so now they they didn't have to wear masks, and you know mm. the season ended. Now we go into the spring. We're back outdoors again. So um, you know the weather's nice. Yeah. Uh, you know we, we we opened the season this past Saturday. Um, we have games this week. I know we have rain coming in, but. Um, you know, it's this optimism again. Every time there's a new season, yeah. there's, there's optimism, and, and people are just looking forward to it. Rain feels like less of a problem, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. We can we can deal with rain. It will dry. It really does. I've never I wasn't thinking about that. It's probably one of those obstacles that you guys say that feels good. We'll take a rain out as long as we can play the next day. Um, as far as the uh, let's recap winter a little bit because you guys had some great programs as you always do. What'd you like most about the winter season? Well, we, you know, this was the first year with the power rankings and the statewide playoff system, too. Yeah, so how'd you end up liking it? Uh, well, our girls' basketball team finished 18-2, and two and they were the 12th seed overall. So we've got to do some things with their schedule. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, 18-2 and two is a pretty good year. Yes, it is. Not much. They lost to two very good teams, um, and they had one home playoff game. So, you know, playing at home is a huge advantage in any sport. Feels like they should have more and of you. So what we need to do is figure out how to increase or improve our non-league schedule so that our opponent power ranking can raise. There's nothing we can do about the Cape Ann League. That's our schedule. It is what it is. Yeah. Um, but we play up in Division Two. Right. And so for both boys and girls, boys were actually ranked, they were 13 and 7, had a good year. Yeah. They were ranked 35th. So they, the top 32 make the playoffs. And they they qualified because they were above 500. 
Okay. They actually won their first playoff game, and they play up to Division Two as well. So, um, you know, we had great regular seasons. Boys basketball won the league. Uh, girls basketball did not, even though they had a great record. They came in second. Um, boys, uh, boys track won the state championship. You guys are unbelievable. You know, track. The, the, it was what are the what is in the water here with the runners? I don't get it. Well, I, I think it's the community, but it also it's our coaches. Yeah. You know, and it's it's the, the what what they have the resources available to them. We have fantastic coach in every sport, but track, cross country. Yeah, yeah. You know, stability, same people. You know, same names. You know. Don Hanniger, Brian Moore, yeah. uh, Mike McCormick. Brian Moore actually was the coach of the year for Eastern Mass. Oh, wow. Track coach. So we had we had school records. Um, Cape, I don't think they lost in anything that they did. Crazy. The Eastern Mass, the relays, the, <laughs> the, uh, the state championship. Just They actually dominated the state championship meet. So, um, And then boys hockey had a great year. Yeah. Um, There's a team that uh, – Schedule's hard. That's the, what you're talking about with basketball a little bit, yeah, right? That's yeah. a team that... Uh, but it takes two. You know, the, yeah. the opponent has to want to play you. Um, yeah. So the hockey, Paul, you mean, has a tradition of playing these schools, and that's that helped him. Um, he was able to host a playoff hockey game for the first time. The MIA allowed games played at higher seeds. And, we, you know, so we beat Wilmington the first game 4-0. Yeah. And then we go to Norwood uh, the second the second round and we were the better team yeah um, we were up one nothing uh, then almost went up two to one two to zero we had a two on one breakaway and didn't score they score um we end, end up leading two to one they score 26 seconds left in regulation goes into double overtime and they scored and yeah we got beat so it was a tough way tough way to lose a season because uh you know i think our hockey team potentially had a chance to to, yeah. to keep going. But there's good teams when you get to that level, and either team could move on, but, you know, he, he coached us such a great job with them and in the weight room and, and, you know, just getting them prepared to play. So yeah, I always say, we always talk about this. You're a coach at heart. What are those losses like, though? Because, I mean, I know <clears throat> I know Coach Ball, you mean, he's going to dwell over that all off season. He'll be frustrated not finishing that game off. I'm sure we've all had tough losses in life. How do you deal with those as a coach? Yeah, it's it's not hard to deal with. That's an understatement, what you said about Coach Amin. Like, he's, he's <laughs> yeah. still, that still bothers him. Uh, I haven't but, even talked to him, and I know that that is the yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, sometimes, sometimes a win, you, you're too high after a win and you're too low after a loss yeah and you have to sort of balance it out but when a season ends you know this it is what it is so yeah and then you there's nothing you can do usually after a loss you can make corrections and improve and, and get back out there uh, at yeah. the end of season you can't do that so it's tough belichick always says uh it's like a crash landing you fly in a plane and then just you know that, that's what he refers to it there's nothing like it there's right. nothing after yeah, it. you know most coaches once that happens they turn the page they look to next year yeah the, the freshmen become sophomores and they start looking, you know, to, uh, you know, how things are going to go. Yeah. Was there a big, uh, is there a, is there a difference with these? Cause I mean, I'm noticing it. Like if I go out to a restaurant, I feel like people are more appreciative just being out, uh, doing things just, uh, you know, in a post pandemic world. I know we're still technically in a pandemic, but you know what I mean? People feel like they're coming out of this. Uh, is there a little bit of that within the school system too, of just, uh, these kids that, you know, whatever, you lose a playoff game, that, that of course hurts. But, I mean, kids are just happy to be out there competing again in any way, in normally, in a normal way. Yeah, I mean, our, our kids have always been like that. Yeah. Um, you know, we have high numbers, high participation rate. But, uh, yeah, there is a bounce to their step. And, you know, yeah. and not just the participants, but um, the attendance at games, boys, yep. girls, didn't matter which, doesn't matter which the event is. Yeah. Um, we have great student support and even the, the adults are coming back again um you know now that they're allowed into schools yeah, but, yeah. Um, the students really it's been two years you know off and on we've been we've allowed them we haven't allowed them and yeah. now it's open season and we hope that they all come out and support our teams and you don't think about that that's such a huge part i mean i used to love going to games and supporting my friends and stuff that's a huge part of the high school experience that the so many of these kids did lose out on for for that period right and, yeah. and you know especially the indoor events you know like boys basketball and hockey typically traditionally uh, for the indoor events had big crowds yeah and now it's extended girls hockey had good crowds with students. Yeah. Uh, girls basketball had a student section, which we typically didn't have in the past. So yeah. they're they're supporting each other, and um, you know the, I think everybody feels the success or shares in that success that we have. Yeah. 
That's great. The um, what's the biggest uh, change with that group of uh, you know? Obviously, I know you give a lot of credit to those seniors that left during the pandemic. Because I mean, how important are those kids that like led those teams through the pandemic? I mean, you need good leadership. A lot of different rule changes, scheduling issues. I remember you talking to me about the bus situation. I didn't even think of the bus situation in a social distancing world. Like, I mean, I imagine you guys really relied on captains and senior leaders to really get you through a lot of that stuff. Yeah, we did, and we still do. Yeah. Um, by losing the spring two years ago, mm. once we were able to play again, I think they felt like, okay, this is our chance because we don't, we we lost that chance. Yeah. And ever since then, they, uh, you know, they don't take it for granted, or at least they don't seem to. They're, yeah. They're appreciative to be out there. Um, there are so many obstacles right now. You mentioned transportation. We have two. We have a, a game, baseball game. Uh, I'm sorry, softball game and a tennis match on Friday, both away, and we have no buses. So. Mm. Uh, the driver shortage is what causes that. Wow. And we have, so we either have to cancel those games or find alternate transportation. Thankfully, we have vans and we can make it work. Uh, but if What it, kind of vans? We have uh, 15, 14 passenger vans. Just that the school owns? Yes. Okay. Um, and we're fortunate because we we're able to make it work a lot of days. Yeah, yeah. If it was a track meet on Friday, which we require three full buses, wouldn't happen. Wow. And in fact, tomorrow, we're on Wednesday, we have a track meet um, away, and our bus won't be here until 3.30, and the, the meet starts at 3.30. So it's it's just, <laughs> the athletes just need to, to be flexible, and coaches, you know, you, you're getting off the bus and yeah. warming up quickly and playing, and um, it's not ideal, but it is what it is and something we can't control. Needless to say, it's always something, huh? <laughs> it is something. But, but the senior group that was here um, really led the charge, and they were very talented as well yeah. um, during, that, during the initial pandemic and last year. Um, and they kind of led the way with, like, our seniors this year, our captains have, have accepted that same role. And, um, you know, they've uh -oh. kind of, the bar has kind of raised a little bit. Okay. I did not know that, that that bus shortage was hurting you guys like that. I mean, I've heard it throughout other communities. I did not, I guess I just never thought of you guys, but you're right, athletics, that would really impact it. Yeah, typically it's the driver who gets done their bus run during the day. Yeah. Now comes and takes us. So they have to finish their run before they're available to Which us. Which is like, usually it would be a different person, but they don't have a different person right now. That's huh? right. Man, talk about the staff shortage world, uh, hitting close to home at Newburyport High School. Again, Kyle Hodgson joining us. Uh, Sarah Blackstone producing today, as usual. Thank you, Sarah. Um, catching up on the winter season and looking ahead to the spring season. Let's do that a little bit right now. What do you like most about the spring season right now? we got some teams that, uh, I, I, when it's Newburyport, I always got to ask who has a chance of winning championships. I think that's the fair question, right? Yeah, well, I, I think each every one of our team, this might be our deepest spring with all of our teams. Uh, the, the teams who have won... We had four Cal championships last spring. Wow. And we yeah. had boys and girls lacrosse who won the North and advanced to the state semifinals. Mm. Um, and both of those teams are going to be, you know, reloaded and, and they should make a good run again. Remind me my Newburyport history. Girls has always been very good at lacrosse, right? And the boys are... Well, they were. That, they, or is that the other way around? Well, girls have been good yep. recently. They, you know, Cat Batchelder started the program. They weren't good then. She, she scraped to get players, and she built the program to where it is. And now they are you know, perennial powers gotcha. and very strong. So you give and her that credit for and, building that? And she, she has, that's, that's her baby. And, and just from the youth on up, it's, it's really grown. Mm -hmm. And the boys are strong, and it's consistently strong now. Josh Wedge, mm -hmm. um, numbers are we're about 50. So we, we have the highest numbers. I mean, almost we have too many players, but... Um, they're they're very strong um, yeah. and good young kids again. So I think they're they're both boys and girls are going to be similar. Both playing very difficult schedules, mm -hmm. um, playing the best there is um, Division One opponents, and uh, so both will compete. It's not for the North now. It's it's you know statewide. Um, yeah, but um, they will be the, they'll certainly be the better teams in the North. Uh, baseball uh, strong pitchers. Uh, returning and uh, they lost a tough one the other day Gloucester um, four unearned runs lost four to three Ooh. never but, like losing a Gloucester do you yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, never like losing the, the home opener either but that's true uh, but they're right back at it they're they're going to make a run at both the league title and they'll be uh, competitive regionally softball uh, is really this will be their best team in seven years 
Uh, they had a tough uh, opening match, uh, opening game yesterday on the road against Division I North Andover, but they're at home today against North Reading at the league opener. Um, so that we expect a strong season out of them. Uh, girls tennis won four Cal titles in a row. Mm. Um, they're, they're, you know, loaded, yeah. um, strong, and, and, and uh, committed. Boys tennis numbers had gone from like four to seven to now we're in the mid twenties. Oh, good. When I so, first started doing this, I remember you saying you didn't have enough to even hold a tryout. Yeah, that was it was shocking to me. We actually co opted with Triton. Yeah. And now, I mean, it, the numbers are just just. Booming. Awesome. That um, is good. And, to hear. and it's and it's with with uh, eighth. Well, we don't have eighth graders this year, but we have good uh, freshman group, and I know there's a strong eighth grade group too. So we expect that uh, to continue and to be more competitive in, in the boys tennis, and then spring track. You know, you it's the winter track kids basically. And yeah, it's yeah. One hundred and thirty five of them, and we should be both boys and girls be um, very competitive there as well. Indulge me on the tennis for a second. What do you think plays a role in that the most? Because, I mean, uh, you know, I'm a tennis guy. It's, it doesn't, you know, I'm a couple of good Americans right now, but you don't have, you know, the big three haven't been from the United States. There's not, I wouldn't say there's great television for tennis right now. You have to find it if you want to go find a tennis match. Uh, what do you think? I've been worried about the game for a while. What do you think got your program kind of rejuvenated? Well, I think, um, you know, I, th I think the community here, we have an indoor club yep. that helps. Not that, every community and, has that. Yeah. Correct. And uh, But that club's been there, too. So it mm -hmm. did, why did it dip? But I think the club has done some really nice things with youth players. So it's generated some interest. And now now we're starting to benefit that at the high school level. Mm -hmm. The girls' numbers, Jesse Craddock, our previous coach, Carly Fair, who was our coach up until last year, uh, Jana Schulson is our current coach. Um, they have built those numbers just um, – just out of success and, and running a great program. Mm. Um, and that's continued. Um, that's been consistent. But getting the boys' numbers up, um, we actually last year during COVID, what helped was we had uh, players like Finn Sullivan. Mm. He was a four sport varsity player last year. Wow. And it was unique because you can't do that in a typical <laughs> yeah. year. But we had four seasons last year. Right, right. So we had some athletes who didn't play a spring sport who, who played on our tennis team. And that brought athleticism and more of a, a team feel to it. And uh, that now you bring in some young players who are actually tennis players, and it's a good mix. And I think now it's going to take off um, to, to being more competitive like, like it should be. Yeah, that's great to hear. And I actually just did a, a news story the other day uh, in for, their, for the other station, WBZ, an actual news story about how the game – uh, equipment for the game exploded during the pandemic and whether people noticed it or not people chose to play tennis a lot during the pandemic in quarantine whatever because it is a social distance sport that you could go out and do safely and uh, I just I wonder if we'll see that translate at the high school level it seems like it already is so that's that's cool very happy to hear that all right so tennis isn't good did you guys still have the four courts we have three courts. Uh, three courts. So that's a that's a major obstacle. <laughs> that is an obstacle. Uh, you know, <laughs> so we, we five would be ideal. Yes, five. it would. And there's five points in a high school tennis match. You get three singles and two doubles matches, which is why you have to have five courts if you want to be you know on time. <laughs> yeah, I mean our, <laughs> you know? our matches typically last four hours. Yeah, when they when they shouldn't do that. And yeah. they, it's a beautiful setting and a beautiful up in Atkins and Common, but. This community that has an indoor facility, yeah. to not have outdoor where it is a lifetime sport, yeah. um, it's too bad. There's just there's not much space. I know there's some groups in town, um, and I'm, I fully support that. That we would like to see two more. I courts. bet you do. <laughs> but, we, but we'd like to see. Two, we're renovating two courts at the middle school, but they need to be five courts together. Right. Um, so we're hoping that at some point down the road, the tennis community. Uh, yeah, has that. Benefit. There was. I wonder. You couldn't even put the doubles matches on those courts, right? They wouldn't allow that offsite. Has that been well, talked about? You, you could, but there's mm -hmm. one coach, so yeah, the coach can't true. be in both places. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a very strange situation. Yeah. There you go. There's our public plea to Newburyport. Get the five. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. Again, Kyle Hudson joining us. Uh, final couple of minutes here. Joppa afternoon drive. Uh, Sarah Blackstone producing. Uh, what has been the uh, most su biggest surprise for you? Whether it could be any season. Think back to the fall. Uh, I don't know. Was it just nice to play a Thanksgiving football game again? Uh, you know, wh what's been what's been the year like all altogether? Yeah, um, I don't know if there's like one specific event. It was everything seemed to be like firsts again. Whether it was a Thanksgiving football game that we yeah. missed, 
A um, little extra joy there. It, it, it was, uh, you know, a tough 12-7 game. You're right, yeah. Little, I remember you know, that score. Yeah. You know, ball at the one twice, first and goal. But anyways. <laughs> Not that you remember <laughs> the details, yeah. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> but it was, uh, you know, it was really just seeing the kids back out there again. The boys soccer team won their first two Cal titles in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, just watching our, the talented kids that we had during that stretch too. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate that we couldn't compete at the state level in tournaments. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that usually to be really competitive at a state level, you have to have two classes in a row, like junior, senior, strong, um, you know, because for depth. And yeah. we had that. And it was unfortunate that those kids couldn't couldn't go compete. Yeah, that does so, hurt. Yeah. The, uh, is I mean, I did, what, what did those kids leave, the ones that had to leave like that? Is that... Did they was it a sour taste where they just happened to be out there? I mean, even when you lose in the tournament, right? Like I remember loving getting that shot. You know, it's a it's the worst loss of your life. Season's over. That crash landing thing we talked about, but you got the shot at it. There's got to be a little bit of those kids going to college, just like Ugh, I wish I had a chance. You know? Yeah. You know, I mean, most we won twelve Cape Ann League Division championships last year. So yeah. that's that's goal number one. Yeah. Know, to win that and then to compete at the state level. And our teams were were not just making the playoffs; they were mm. making the playoffs and winning. Yeah. So they knew they know that they're close. <laughs> yeah. Just mm. and and it you know, but like I said earlier, they're good teams. So you've got to take advantage of things. So I think kids are are satisfied with their experience. Yeah. Um, it, it's really hard to win a state championship. Yeah. In, with thirty two plus teams making it. Yeah. You know, basketball had seventy two teams mm. in their division. And you have one state champion. So to yeah. win something Mar- at that level. Um, March Madness at college is 64 for the, you know. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, that's a hard it's one. It's very difficult. But I think our, our athletes uh, felt like they, um, you know, uh, did very well in, in our league and regionally. And um, they're proud of what we produced. Mm, that's good to hear. Um, is there uh, something you'd like to see changed over the over this year? I mean, I know we talked about maybe carrying some stuff over from, from the pandemic. What from a uh, from a Newburyport High School perspective, uh, would you like to like biggest thing on Kyle's plate right now to implement as change? Well, we, you know, I'm sure you're doing it every day. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we, we, we kind of put some projects on hold when COVID came. You know, we had just started yeah. a branding project. We had new new logos made. And mm-hmm. the plan was to start um, getting our logos around the stadium and in different uh, parts of our facility, the parking lot and the gym. And, yeah, yeah. Um, putting, that's, like not, that's not an easy project. It's not. It's a fun project. Yeah. Um, but, it, it, you know, just it wasn't a priority when everything else happened. And, yeah, yeah. You know, so now we'd like to get back to more of the – the building the pride and, and making connections and you know we took all our championship banners down from the gym because we had so many years on them we were adding a second or third banner per sport so we're consolidating to a bigger banner so like that's a fun project so yeah. these are the things that we're gonna you know we, we can't wait to unveil yeah uh, but they're all in the, the early the mid stages now of developing them but we want to we want to, you know, show our brand and, and, and show our pride and, and continue with things that we've started in the last five, seven years. Absolutely. Very cool. I know so many schools are going through that because they've actually changed full logos, mm-hmm. like, you know, like whether it be for whatever reason. But uh, again, Kyle Hodson joining us final minute or two here with him as we uh, wrap up the uh, the sports talk here for Newburyport Athletics and talk about uh, all this stuff to come. I had a great conversation with your basketball coach. You know, he's a good friend of mine, Dave Clay. Uh, I think he's a great coach as well, but I had a great conversation with him. It just accidentally got us there, uh, led us there about cutting players um, and how he was visibly, he gets hurt. He doesn't sleep the night before on cutting players. I know you guys have already gone through a whole year of this. What is your advice to coaches when, uh, I mean, that is not an easy process. And just listening to him gave me a whole new outlook on it. Like it was like, this guy, I don't, I believe him. I believe that he did not sleep the night before knowing he was going to have to cut 12 kids or cut you know, maybe it's one person that's really bothering them. Uh, it, yeah. That was tough. It's tough because you develop you develop these youth players. They, they for, I'll use basketball for example. These players go to his basketball camps in the summer. Yeah, the clinics that he does in the off season. So he's developing them. Developing them. He's building the, a little bit of relationship right away. Um, so it's it, it is it becomes more personal. Yeah. And so, like basketball, for example. 
you can only have so many on a team by MIA policy. You can right. only play so many players. So we can't just take unlimited people. So he, yeah. basketball had like 35 extra players that could, that they were good. Yeah. They just, just the way it worked out. And he doesn't, he doesn't want to build those players, build them up, build a relationship and then have to say, you're no longer part of the program. Yeah. But that's the reality. And so that's difficult. You know, my suggest, my recommendation is have it be personal. Don't, post a list where there's a name or you know Man, talk when to I was the in school they all used to do that that's how we all used to find out yeah and it's it's not a great way to do it and, and yeah. I know Dave takes some pride in talking to players and because somebody doesn't make a team one year it doesn't mean they if they're a younger player they can't they can't come try out the following year and make the team yeah um, it's hard to do but um, so he's you know and he, he or our coaches if they do have to make cuts they do persuade or push the uh, the athlete to maybe play another sport like track or, or you know another mm -hmm. sport that doesn't that can take as many as they want so yeah. we, we we want two sport three sport athletes we, we we don't want somebody to specialize in something so that can be devastating on kids I mean I it's it's so great to hear those stories of kids who do maybe play another sport or do do try out the next year which yes is hard uh, to jump in but there are great stories like that and just uh, you know not not giving up on those dreams and uh, I just you know that's a, it's a good lesson for most kids. I think the Michael Jordan thing always comes up, of course, you know, right. got cut from his freshman team and yep. that guy ended up having a pretty good career. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> speaking of good careers, I just got the alert. Tiger Woods is going to play in the Masters. You see that? There you go. I haven't seen it yet. No. I broke the news there. to you. Breaking right. news to everybody. There you go. Um, again, Kyle Hodgson, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Director of Athletics, Newburyport High School. Uh, this has been fun. Anything you want to say to the community? Come out and support the uh, kids this, this spring or what? Yeah, you know, we'd love to see. Uh, we have plenty of space at any of our venues. You know, coaches are working hard, kids are working hard, so we hope that we start, uh, we, we just fill the places and show the support. I'm making this a uh, question every time you come on the show now. you got some uh, Major League Baseball in the uh, family blood here. How's that going? Yeah, it's good. He, uh, he, he's he been in Jupiter. Yeah, he remind played, me. Uh, Cody Morris. Good, thank you. He played in uh, single A last year yep. after, he, after finishing at BC. And then we, I got a text uh, a week and a half ago, and he, he was dressing for the Marlins, the Major League wow. team. Um, and he actually spent four days with them. He had in the split squad. He had a couple hits, um, and then he had a major league hit against uh, the, the Astros last weekend. So wow. he's uh, he's actually just arrived in Wisconsin. He's going to play high A to start the season, which he had, he had hoped, and you know hopefully he ends up in Double A at the end of the year. But but he showed he belonged. Cool, you know, so Boston College Eagle. That's it. <laughs> I was on the show. He's a great kid. So I'm always going to ask about him now. There you go. Is that your ride? I heard a, ride. Hey, I heard a horn outside. Time to go. There you go. Time to go. Kyle Hodson, Director of Athletics at Newburyport. Always a pleasure to join. Always great to see you in person, too, man. Great. This has been good. Thank All right. You. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for coming by, everybody. Sarah Blackstone producing. Sarah Hayden, the boss, also in the building. Uh, thanks to the two Sarahs, as always. My name is Drew Mulholland. This has been Live at Drew's House, Jump Afternoon Drive. See you next time.